Okay, so I'm not even going to do a normal intro. Like, I thought I was going to do something happier this week, but I'm not going to. I'm going to talk about something that is important to me. And the reason I'm going to talk about it is because it's important to me. Um, and for those of you who don't like this subject, I'm just going to say it now. It is going to be about Islam, and if you think Islam can't be criticized, or if you're offended by this, please click off because those aren't excuses. Islam is an idea, and ideas deserve to be criticized. If an idea is criticized and you are threatened by it, I feel like that says a lot about the idea. Um, and that it's not foolproof, and the reason that people keep saying it's foolproof is because they're in denial. Um, but that's what I'm going to be talking about today, and specifically I'm going to be talking about the hijab and what it is, because I made a tweet not so long ago about the hijab um, and it exploded because a bunch of people who are sort of on the ex-Muslim scene who were quite high up there retweeted it and it got a lot of, um, you know, it got a lot of likes and retweets, which I wholly appreciate. Thank you so much, Yasmin Muhammad and Free From Hijab and all of those other campaigns because you know, I get like one like sometimes. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, and in that tweet, I had said that I don't think most people understand what hijab is. I think they have a preconceived notion of what hijab is. So I'm just going to explain what like a classical idea, the classical idea of the hijab. There's loads of different versions now, loads of different people wear hijab in a different way and they've ascribed different meanings to it and I'm going to explain that as well. Now, I was sort of <laughs> roasted on my way home because people were saying, uh, I think one girl had said, uh, first you left Islam and now you wear blue lipstick, I can see that making bad choices is part of your life or something like that. Um, please feel free to roast me in the comments. Um, I would love to show the world how wonderful Muslims are to people who speak against their religion and speak against their thoughts and the things that they do and the things that they try to put on everybody else. Because, you know, God, only God can judge us, but Muslims also judge you. Just, just saying. Um, but anyways, what is the hijab? Okay, so the literal meaning of the hijab is a covering it's it has like I don't it's been a while since I studied Arabic it's been a while since I spoke Arabic um, but I oh this is something I was meant to mention this is gonna be very off book um, I am not gonna leave any proofs or evidence because honestly I don't feel like I need to I feel like the internet is a place where you can readily find information and I want to um, encourage people to readily seek knowledge uh, and I understand that that's something that people don't really want to do and people get in a huff and like where's the evidence honestly if you're making a claim that you know hijab is a good thing the burden of proof is on you I'm not here to prove anyone's point I am merely here to state how I feel and my opinion and if you don't like that that's fine you don't have to agree with me I don't think anyone has to agree with anyone. I think that freedom of thought is great. Um, whereas most people might disagree because I had an argument yesterday with somebody on Twitter. I don't like arguing. Arguing is like one of my least favorite things to do. I had an argument on Twitter yesterday about how talking about Islam is not discriminatory. You are allowed to talk about Islam. You're allowed to mock Islam. It is a religion. It, it, you know, it, is such a huge thing it is allowed to be mocked if you cannot mock something that something needs to stop being because that is a limit on your right to talk about things and your right to think about things you know if something cannot be regarded in a light-hearted way then what is it really um but anyway back to the subject at hand I will not pro be providing any evidence. There are people who are much more scholarly and much more intelligent than me that have given proofs for these kinds of things. And if you're really interested in what I think about hijab, you can read it all in my blog. All the links will be in the description below. Um, because 
honestly, I think it's a waste of time to give, you know, research all these proofs, present these proofs, and then, you know, be for it to be discarded anyway. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a point for that. The internet is a place where you can search for information. You can search for information that you particularly agree with, and you can search for information to find the truth. I don't need to tell you anything. And at the end of the day, I can't convince you of anything. I don't have that power. You're allowed to hold your own opinions and I am allowed to hold my own opinions. And this is me expressing my opinion. I understand that that's a difficult concept for a lot of people to grasp, but there it is. It's a free country. We are allowed to think what we want and we are allowed to say what we want. So the hijab, what is the hijab? Most people, oh, actually, I should have brought out a prop for this. Give me a second. So most people think that the hijab is simply a cloth. It is simply a cloth that you wrap around your head. I know you slimy people are going to laugh at me. But most people think that this is the hijab, right? This is the hijab, just the thing that you wear on your head. I can understand why you would think that this is the hijab but it's not it is not the hijab uh, a lot of different people have ascribed different names to it like jilbabs abayas burkas whatever this this piece of cloth that is simply on my head and the rest of my body is showing this is not hijab okay i'm tired of people to referring simply this as hijab okay this is a scarf that I have put on my head. Hijab is a head to toe covering. A lot of people can't decide whether or not the feet can be shown, but I was taught, um, I practiced that the feet couldn't be shown. So you had to wear socks or, you know, proper shoes or whatever. You couldn't wear like peep toe shoes because, you know, feet are extremely sexual, but we'll get to that. So hijab is a head to toe covering of um your body besides your hands and your face and those two things are also debatable some scholars say you have to cover your face other scholars say it's not necessary um but that's what the hijab is that is the definition of an islamic hijab it is from head to toe okay in addition to this the garment you are wearing has to be opaque so it can't be like sheer or see-through so like if you see the outfit that i'm wearing now i know you can't see most of it but i'm wearing full black it is skin tight you know i, I feel like a lot of people would consider this as acceptable uh, with along with the headscarf it's not and the reason for that is that it has to be opaque it has to be non-see-through you cannot see through the clothes to see the shape of a woman's body to see how many legs she has to see what she's hiding she it has to be completely opaque it has to be loose fitting it can't be skin tight okay even this on my arm is too tight it has to be loose all around i actually don't have my abaya anymore i like got rid of it ages ago but um the one that i used to wear was came from here all the way down to my feet um and so you couldn't see like the shape of my neck or the shape of my arms so it was joined like here like it was like a bat wing um so you couldn't see the shape of my arm you, you know you couldn't see the shape of my legs so it it has to be opaque it has to be loose fitting and it has to be non glamorous like it can't be super like it can't be a bright color that catches the eye it can't be sparkly it can't have jewelry on it 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 has to be a plain opaque loose fitting head to toe garment that is the hijab for the women and i'll get to the men in a bit but that is what hijab is so literally all you are showing is possibly your face and your hands that is it it is not simply a head wrap it's not what it is that is just a piece of cloth that you put on your head that is it so those of you who want to participate in world hijab day if you're all doing it wrong you have the tutorial here so 
let's examine why people, you know, obviously there's the reason that you do it for God and that's fine. If you want to wear hijab because you believe that God commanded it and you just want to do it for God, do it for God. To be honest, I wore hijab um, and niqab. I covered my face as well until I was about 18 to 20. I took off my niqab at 18 um, because I literally couldn't breathe in it, in it anymore. But I started wearing niqab when I was like 12 and it was my choice. I chose to do that and I chose to take it off. Nobody forced me to wear niqab. Um, niqab is a face covering. It's when you, uh, I don't have any of those anymore. But it's, it's a face covering. Um, you are only allowed to show your eyes. That is it. Um, but if you're wearing it for God, that is different. I have no argument with you. But if your logical sort of reasoning for why hijab should be worn is so that, you know, men don't look at you and, you know, the today's society is so sexually driven and men are always looking at women. First of all, you are equating when like I heard this argument ages ago, I think it was on a Zuck and like, um, question and answer session where he was like oh women in the west they cover their breasts and their you know pubic region with just a bikini we're just a little bit more modest because we cover everything you are equating something you know debatably sexual i don't know whether people consider everything like i'm sure there's people out there who consider none of it sexual but you know for to to continue the argument we are equating some sexual parts of our body with our entire body so now your arm is sexual, your hair is sexual, your neck is sexual, your shoulders are sexual, you know, your your feet are sexual. I mean, I know some guys like feet, but that's like one in five. What about the, the other? This is what I mean. And in addition to that, you are like equating your whole body to a vagina. You are a walking vagina that needs to be covered. The second thing is you are laying the blame of like ogling on the woman because it's her responsibility to cover and that is not okay that is not a logical argument people are responsible for their actions if a man is ogling a woman the man is responsible for ogling the woman okay it's it's i feel like it's such common logic but i have like been on the other side of the fence and for some reason it doesn't sink in that like i have been told and i have said that it is our responsibility as women to, you know, keep ourselves, like, safe. No. It is the responsibility of men to not be actual fucking dicks and just live their life. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Like, how can you blame, you know, the woman for something the man is doing? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, y y you can't have impure thoughts about you well either way whether you're wearing hijab or not if he's having impure impure thoughts about you he's having impure impure thoughts about you and this is where the male hijab comes in okay so in islam men are only required to cover from their belly button or their navel to their knee and whether that's just above the knee or just below the knee debatable um, but they are only supposed to cover that much from their belly button to their knee. That is it. And their hijab is literally to lower their gaze. So sisters over here be standing in, you know, maybe 40 degree weather. We don't know. There's, there's some of us all around the world. We are standing in 40 degree weather full clothes and this guy just his entire responsibility is to just look at the floor that's his hijab he's not making any effort at all you know and if he stares at you it's your responsibility to cover up it's your responsibility to stay you know wrapped up to make sure he doesn't look at you how okay also the first gaze is forgiven he is allowed to look at you one time. <coughs> Can you imagine if, like, a sister was, like, you know, full hijab, burqa, everything, right? And then someone was to tell her, you can go out like that one time. You know, you can go in front of a man one time and then you have to cover everything. Can you, can you imagine that? Can that happen? Like... If you set a rule, set a rule. If you're going to say, oh, but the first, the first time he looks at you, that's fine. Excuse me. Also, in addition 
to a full head to toe fucking shebang like no joke no joke head to toe shebang you cannot wear noisy like jewelry because you're not supposed to attract the attention of any men who may be having impure thoughts about you you are not allowed to wear like anklets that make a ringing sound or like really noisy shoes uh, you are not allowed to go outside with perfume on because the woman who does that and goes outside with perfume on it's equivalent to her having premarital sex it's equivalent equivalent to zina and like how which like translates into a lot of other things like i i don't understand why it's so difficult for other people to understand but then again i kind of do because i used to believe all these things and i used to tell people these things that you can't go outside with perfume you can't attract the attention of a man it's haram you can't do it it's forbidden but you're really just taking away a lot there because then like for me you know that was a whole reason for my dad to just keep me at home you know don't even be in front of men and if men come in the house, you go and sit up in your room or you stay in the kitchen where you can do whatever you want over there, but you can't come in front of men because you're not wearing the whole thing. So if a, if a builder comes to your house and you are not in full hijab, you are sinful for that because that man has seen you quote unquote naked, basically. And it's dehumanizing. It makes you feel less than, it, you know, when women travel out of a certain distance, the distance is debatable. They have to have a man with them. It is almost like part and parcel of this whole hijab deal. If you're walking around, but this is why Saudi took such a long time to give women the right to drive is because if they drive out of a certain length, it varies from scholar to scholar. If you drive outside of that realm, it's like, it's like prohibited for you. You can't, you can't without a legal male guardian, male guardian, and you know, a mahram, which is like your father, your blood brother, can't be a step brother, blood brother or half brother, your son, or your husband. Like it, it gives, it takes away all your freedom to just be by yourself, like just do your own thing, look how you want. It, 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 it stifles your, your self-expression. Because you can't even go out with makeup on. I see so many hijabis with makeup on. It doesn't count. <laughs> Look, I know I don't practice your religion. I know I'm dressed like this. But your hijab doesn't count. Because it's not the full thing. You can't just wear a half hijab. There's no such thing as a half hijab. And the reason, like, I appreciate that, that it has gone to that minimal, like, little circle scarf thing. Because at least, you know, you guys are living your lives. There are so many women around the world who are forced into those giant bags that I used to wear. And I wasn't particularly free in, but I thought I was doing it for God, so I was happy. But what about those women who don't want to do it for God? Who just do it because the law is forcing them, imprisoning them because they're taking it off. You know, you, you keep, like, I've seen the argument, oh, hijab is a choice. Hijab is a choice in the West, because the West gives you the freedom to choose. In in middle in the middle east and other countries there isn't that freedom there is not that freedom they are forced to wear it by law by their families you know i for me for example i was different look i couldn't have colored my hair i couldn't have cut it because my family was all like and this is all a cultural thing but look religion influences culture so it's not even an argument but like even when i cut my hair my whole family was shocked mom didn't talk to me for a week my mom was ill and she didn't talk to me for a week you know, I got it coloured. Oh, you shouldn't get it coloured. You should have asked somebody. Why should I ask somebody to do something with my hair? You know, why should I have to ask somebody to dress how I want? Why should the law control what I wear? Why is that so important? I don't like politics. Politics confuses me, honestly. That's probably not surprising. 
But politics confuses me, and I have to really, really read into it before I agree to something. When it comes to voting, it is an entire stress for me. But this is something I am so sure about that I am putting it on the internet. And up until recently, I didn't put anything on the internet. You need to support No Hijab Day. There is a World Hijab Day happening on the 1st of February. You need to support No Hijab Day. And the reason you need to support that is to support the choice to wear it. It's the same with pro-life and uh, pro-abortion, okay? You're not supporting abortions. You're not going around killing every baby in every womb. You are supporting the choice to choose whether or not you are going to kill that baby. And I am on neither side of that fence. I don't even want to get into that. But you need to support this cause to start the movement for women to start choosing whether or not they want to wear hijab. I have no problem if you wear hijab and you support hijab because you believe it is for your God, okay? But not everybody believes in your God and not everybody wants to do what your God says they should do. So you need to support this movement for pure, for a very basic human right, okay? The right to express yourself in the way that you want to express yourself. If the, if the West was as controlling as the Middle East, you would not be comfortable here saying that you made a choice. So please give that freedom that you have to others who need it. Thank you. Subscribe. Follow me on Twitter to look at all my angry rants because for me they're hysterical. If you've got any hate comments or any roasts, please leave them down in the comments. Um, like and share everywhere. This is something that is really important to me. And next week, I will be doing my hijab story um, in honor of February the 1st. I'm going to be talking about more about my journey with hijab. I know I spoke about it a little bit here, but I want to talk about it more um, in the next week. Um, so tune in for that. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, evening, year, month, whatever. Goodbye.